Trauma and anger in Flint tonight, but also some good news. All the players trying to fix the Flint water crisis held a town hall to try to bring everybody up to speed. But as Mara McDonald explains, the rage over what's happened shows no sign of settling down yet. Mara? In this meeting, you heard a lot of this on these bottles in an attempt to sort of drown out the speakers. Why was it? Many people in here were very upset. There was not a public comment portion here. They didn't have an open mic to vent at. What they had to do was write their questions down on note cards. Incredibly important. The bottle crunching was heard throughout the town hall meeting. As was clapping to drown out the speakers, people are angry for a lot of reasons here, but it really ticked them off that there was no public comment allowed tonight in what was an informational update on where lead levels are, finally spilling over when about 20 or so people stopped with the crunching and clapping and started yelling from the audience. <laughs> The anger was directed at all, but some, like Rich Baird, the governor's point person in Flint, were singled out. The news from the scientists, however, was good. Of all the thousands of lead tests done in Flint over the last six months, more than 96% come back with lead levels that are below the federal standard for what is considered acceptable. Flint now has the same Legionella numbers as Wayne and Oakland. And while 300 homes that have high lead have had their service lines replaced, the plan is to replace 6,000 service lines per year for the next three years. But still, out of an abundance of caution, the EPA says keep the filters on your faucets. Lead levels in these homes have significantly dropped. In addition, the city is putting out a request for proposal. The idea is this, replace 6,000 lead service lines to homes that are seriously affected every year for the next three years. We are in Flint. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4.